हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर निमिषा जादौर वर्किंग एज ए असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन स्कूल ऑफ स्टडीज इन्वायरमेंटल केमिस्ट्री जिवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी ग्वालियर टुडे वी शैल लर्न अबाउट द केमिकल ऑक्सीजन डिमांड एंड द टोटल ऑर्गेनिक कार्बन दैट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज सी ओ डी और द टी ओ सी द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज टू आइडेंटिफाई वॉट इज सी ओ डी एंड टी ओ सी their determination procedure and the environmental significance of determining these parameters let's start with the first parameter that is cod it is also known as the chemical oxygen demand a chemical oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen that is required by the organics organic material present in the water to digest it, that particular organic matter by 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 the chemicals uh, oxidizing any chemical oxidizing agent the cod is similarly used uh, as the application as the bod uh, for the application of determining the strength of pollution load in the water body but the cod is superior for the bod because any type of industrial waste or some of organic waste where that bod test uh, can't perform due to the presence of some toxins and the other chemicals so in that case we can perform the cod test so that it will be helpful to determine the all the organic load present in the water cod test measures all the uh organ uh, bi biologically digestible organic matter as well as the organic or inorganic matter that cannot be digested by the bio biological reaction it is also uh, determined uh, by using the test of cod so the first step of the cod analysis is the sample collection preservation and storage for the collection purposes uh, we will prefer the glass bottles for the sample collection and the homogenized samples contain the satellable solids so it is better to use glass bottle uh, in comparison to the polyethylene uh, bottles if there is delay in collection and analysis preserve the sample by acidifying to ph less than 2 using concentrated h2so4 and then the sample can be preserved for maximum 7 days sample handling the sample volume used for the cod test is 2 ml so the measuring the sample volume is critical be sure to mix the sample well and homogenize if necessary pipette quickly to avoid the settling errors and cod can be run on industrial sample that may have high bods if the cod strength is greater than 1650 mg per liter the sample must be diluted we will prefer to make a 1 is to 2 dilution by measuring 50 ml of the sample and adding to 50 ml of deionized water after that we are adding 2 ml of the well mixed dilution to the test tube the first method or we can say the principle of cod analysis is the open reflux method it is the most widely used method for the cod analysis and it is suitable for a wide range of waste with a large sample size in this method the dichromate reflux method is preferred over the procedure using other oxidants like potassium permanganate because the potassium dichromate is superior oxidizing having a superior oxidizing ability and applicable to a wide variety of sample and easy of manipulation instead of free dissolve oxygen chemically bound oxygen in potassium dichromate is used to oxidize the organics as the potassium dichromate is used up the chromium ion is produced and the amount of dichromate used is proportional to the amount of organics present in the sample the oxidation of almost all the organic compounds 
अप टू नाइन्टी फाइव टू हंड्रेड परसेंट इज डन बाय बाय यूजिंग द पोटेशियम डाइक्रोमेट एज ए ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट द ऑर्गेनिक मैटर गेट ऑक्सीडाइज कंप्लीटली बाय यूजिंग डाइक्रोमेट एज ए ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट एंड सिल्वर सल्फेट वर्क हेयर एज ए कैटलिस्ट इन देंस ऑफ कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ एस टू एस ओ फोर टू प्रोड्यूस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड वाटर एज ए बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ सीओडी टेस्ट द एक्सेस ऑफ पोटेशियम डाइक्रोमेट रिमेनिंग आफ्टर द रिएक्शन इज टाइट्रेटेड विद फेरस अमोनियम सल्फेट एंड द डाइक्रोमेट कंज्यूम gives the oxygen required for the oxidation of organic matter so this is a back titration method from where we have titrated excess dichromate remaining in the sample with the help of ferrous ammonium sulfate for the theory determination we are using the strong oxidizing agent that is potassium dichromate and this potassium dichromate in the presence of acid utilize the organic matter in the first reaction we have seen the k2cr2o7 react with h2so4 and convert into the k2so4 and 2cr2so4 ka whole thrice and release the oxygen that is denoted as 3o2 then this oxygen is consumed by the organic matter that is in second step we have seen that the c6h12o6 which denote the organic matter it consume the oxygen and convert the uh, it into the carbon dioxide and the water molecule so the overall reaction is that the chromate ion that is released during this process is back titrated with the ferrous ion and converted into a uh, convert its ionic strength and the color change visually we have seen at the end of the reaction now the apparatus and equipment which is used for the uh, co determination are the 250 or 500 ml erlen mer flask with the standard tapered glass joint friendrich reflux condenser with standard tapered glass joints electric hot plate volumetric pipettes burette burette stand and clamp analytical balance spatula and volumetric flask and boiling beads or may we can use the glass beads here you have seen the picture of a cod digester and in the second one picture we have seen a cod tubes in which we have taken the sample and we are adding the potassium dichromate and when we add all the reagent we will cap it into a cod digester at the temperature of about 100 uh, 205 degree centigrade for 2.5 hr and when the sample is properly refluxed in the cod digester then we keep it in a in a normal temperature to cool down up to an room temperature now the reagent and standards we, that we want to use for the cod uh, determination the first one is the potassium uh, dichromate solution of 0.25 normal uh, solution which is made up by potassium dichromate dissolved in the 1000 ml of distilled water then we are uh, using sulfamic acid as a uh, sulfamic acid to remove the interference of uh, nitrite nitrogen then sulfuric acid reagent that we will prepare by the addition of uh, silver sulfate and the concentrated h2so4 and then we dilute this sample up to 1000 ml by using the sulfuric acid this uh, reagent stand for 1 to 2 days to complete the dissolution then a standard ferrous ammonium sulfate solution is uh, of 0.25 normal will be uh, prepared by using the distilled water to uh, titrate the excess of amount of uh, potassium dichromate ferroin indicator is used for the uh, as a indicator and mercuric sulfate also used to remove the interference of chloride the theoretically uh, cod of the samples depends upon the source of the sample either it will be a ta tap water or it will be a industry and which type of industry it is so the uh, value of cod depends on which type of sample we have taken for the cod test and the sample is stable when refrigerated up to a 3 months when 
uh, we kept it in the absence of visible biological growth for the uh, pseudo determination calibration is not required since the procedure involved the oxidation of organic matter by the potassium dichromate as a oxidizing agent and it is considered as a primary standard so the calibration is not applicable for that particular test now we come to the procedure first of all we will prepare the sample all the sample high in solid should be blended for 2 minutes at high speed after that stirred when the aliquot is taken for the analysis then select the appropriate volume of the sample based on expected cod range for example for the cod range of 50 to 500 mg per liter we 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 have to take a 25 to 50 ml of the sample in the cod tube for reflexing the sample first of all we are placing the 0.4 g of hgso4 in to a uh, 50 ml of uh, this uh, cod vessel uh, this uh, hgso4 is added in the vessel to remove the interferences of chlorine and after that we are taking 20 ml of sample and dilute it uh, dilute again 20 with the 20 ml of distilled water and mix well and after that we are adding some uh, clean humic stones or the glass beads to uh stop the agitation reaction occurs when we add the acid and afterward we are adding 10 ml of 0.25 normal uh, k2cr2o7 it is working as a strong oxidizing agent and afterward we are adding 30 ml of concentrated h2so4 and ag2so4 that is silver uh, sulfate solution it is highly uh, heat produce heat so that uh, pre already present fumic stone and glass glass beads uh, the uh, reduces the, the such kind of agitation or bumping in the cod cell after that uh, we are digested the whole sample into the cod digester for 2 to 3 hours at uh, 80 to 100 degrees centigrade and afterward we can uh, disconnect this reflex condenser and then volume uh, uh, dis, uh, double the volume of the sample by using the distilled water then cool down the whole vessel uh, at the room temperature and this pr presence of excess k2cr2o7 is uh, back titrated with 0.1 normal uh, ferrous ammonium sulfate for uh, this titration we are using ferroin as a indicator and at the end point we have seen that sharp color change from the blue green to reddish brown uh, which shows the uh, end completion of the titration reaction the after uh, uh, for a, after keeping the sample for a time being the again the uh, previous color of the sample is reappear uh, so it is a uh, confirm that the titration process is completed successfully then in the same procedure we have uh, we are also running the blank sample it means the instead of sample we are taking the distilled water so that the whatever the impurities uh, present uh, in present in the uh, sample solution it will eliminate it by the, by substituting the blank into the sample now the calculation can be done by using the formula a minus b into n into 8 into 1000 divided by the ml of the sample where a is the ml of ferrous ammonium sulfate used for the blank and b is the ml of the ferrous ammonium sulfate used for the sample n is the normality of pota uh, potassium dichromate 8 as we determine the oxygen so we have taken the molecule uh, molecular weight of the oxygen and 1000 to convert it into a milligram per liter of milligram per liter strength of the uh, sample so that we can determine the cod in terms of milligram per liter the second method of cod determination is the close reflex method it is also known as titrimetric and colorimetric method in the close reflux method we are using the metallic salt reagent are more which are more economic but require homogenization of the samples to obtain reproducible results this method is conducted with ampules and culture tubes with pre measured reagents which are available commercially 
Measurement of sample volume and reagent volume are critical. This method is economical in the use of metallic salt reagents and generate a smaller quantity of hazardous waste. <clears throat> the principle of oxidation reaction is similar to the open reflex method and the volatile organic compounds are more completely oxidized in a closed system because of longer contact time with oxidant. Digestion vessels with pre-mixed reagents are also available for commercial suppliers. For quality control, we will prefer the open reflex method because it is uh, preferable to analyze the duplicate sample. Then proper homogenization is essential for reproducible result. We have to make a volumetric measurement as accurate as possible and we should use a class A volumetric flask for performing this type of reflux method. The advantages of COD on the other method is that the many organic substances which are difficult to oxidize biologically such as lignin, tannin etc. It can be easily oxidized by using the chem uh, chemical oxidant. Inorganic substances that are oxidized by the dichromate increase the apparent organic content of the sample. Certain organic substances may be toxic to the microorganism used in BOD test. So this kind of organic substance also oxidized in by using the COD test. The higher COD value may occur because of the presence of inorganic substances with which dichromate can react. One of the major advantage of COD test is BOD cannot be determined accurately when toxins are present and the conditions are unfavorable for the growth of microbes. In that condition, COD test is preferable over the, uh, rather than a BOD test. And most uh, important ad uh, advantage of using COD test is that it is completed within 2.5 hours as compared to the BOD test which required the 5 days for the completion of whole procedure. The major drawbacks of COD test is that it is uh, difficult to differentiate between the biodegradable uh, and the biologically resistance component present in the water as well as the COD test uh, is uh, not uh, determine the rate of oxidation of biodegradable compounds so that COD value is always find out the higher than the, uh, the its corresponding BOD value. If the BOD value it come close to the COD value it means the uh, organic sam the sample uh, uh, contain the higher amount of biodegradable organic material. The major application of COD test is that it is used extensively in the analysis of industrial waste. It is particularly valuable in surveys designed to determine and control the loses to sewer system. It is useful to assess the strength of waste which contain toxin and biologically resistant organic substances. Now the next parameter is the TOC that is total organic carbon. The total organic carbon estimation is the speedy way to determine the organic carbon uh, present in the any wastewater sample. But by this test it is uh, difficult to differentiate between the biodegradable carbon and the uh, chemically oxidizable carbon content. So the TOC test is the convenient way to identify the uh, whole organic carbonaceous material present in the wastewater. If we want to uh, establish an empirical uh, relationship between the TOC and uh, BOD or COD. We can say the TOC is almost uh, determine the same content uh, is equal to the that is BOD or COD. The relationship must be established independently for each set of matrix conditions such as various points in a treatment processes. TOC measurement does not replace BOD and COD test as unlike BOD or COD test, 
TOC is independent of the oxidation state of the organic matter and does not measure other organically bound elements such as nitrogen, hydrogen and the inorganics. The method of determining the TOC that is total organic carbon prefer the combustion infrared method. In this method, high temperature combustion method is uh, suitable for the raw water sources for water treatment plants with low turbidity and smaller particle size of suspended matter. Depending on the type of instrument injection part and needle, homogenization is required to be performed to avoid the clogging and achieve the re repeatability of the analysis. Instrumental TOC method utilizes high temperature catalyst and the oxygen or lower temperature less than 100 degree centigrade with irradiation, chemical oxidants or combinations of these oxidants to convert organic carbon to carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide may be measured directly by a non-dispersive infrared analyzer or CO2 may be titrated chemically. In most water samples, the inorganic carbon fraction is many times greater than the organic fraction. So, the eliminating or compensating for inorganic carbon interferences requires multiple determination to measure total organic carbon. Inorganic carbon interference can be eliminated by acidifying the sample to pH 2 or less than 2 to convert the inorganic carbon species to a carbon dioxide. The difference between the total carbon and the inorganic carbon is a total organic carbon. The apparatus and equipment required for the total organic carbon analysis is the total organic carbon analyzer, syringes of different microliter or uh, microliter size, then the sample blended or homogenizer, magnetic stirrer, and TFE coating styrene bars and filtering apparatus of 0.45 micrometer pore diameter filter. Sample collection and preservation and storage required for the determination of total organic carbon is to collect the sample in a glass bottle properly uh, which is properly clean and rinsed with the organic free water protected from the sunlight and sealed with Teflon or the back scepter. Preserve the sample by holding at 4 degrees centigrade for maximum period of 7 days. The reagent required for uh, TOC test is, uh, first of all we have to prepare a reagent water. It is prepare blank and standard solution from the carbon free water, then concentrated for phosphoric acid and the organic carbon stock solution prepared by dissolving anhydrous potassium bithalate in carbon free distilled water and dilute to the 1000 ml. The, its 1 ml contain the 1 milligram of carbon. Phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid is used to preserve the sample and maintain the pH of the sample less than 2. Then the inorganic carbon stock solution will be prepared by dissolving anhydrous sodium carbonate in water and add anhydrous sodium bicarbonate and then dilute the, both the compound up to 1000 ml and its 1 ml contain the 1 milligram of carbon. Carrier gas, purifying oxygen or air, carbon dioxide free and containing less than 1 ppm hydrocarbon is used as a carrier gas. For example, methane is uh, used for the carrier gas throughout the system. For the purging gas, we are using any gas which is free from carbon dioxide and hydrocarbon. And if the sample is turbid or colloidal or oily, then homogenize it in blender until the satisfactory replication is obtained. Now we come to the procedure. For TOC determination, we have to follow the manufacturer's instruction or analyzer assembly testing, calibration and operation. First of all, uh, we have to run a blank uh, into the system. Then the latest instrument provides the direct value of TC that is total carbon and IC that is inorganic carbon in milligram per liter. 
for that we have to take the standard solution in a suitable range then inject the standard for preparing the calibration curve then vary the size sample size from 20 to 100 microliter and to free the sample from inorganic carbon which we are using uh, to analyze the total organic carbon take sample from this by a capillary syringe and inject into the analyzer Measure the response and repeat with the three such estimation to chain an average. Multiply the value obtained by the dilution factor if applicable and then regularly analyze laboratory control sample and standard to confirm the performance of the analyzer. So the sample lies within the range of calibration curve so that we can determine the amount of total carbon present in the sample and the calculation is done by the calibration done by the instrument with the series of standards of organic and inorganic carbon to cover the expected range. Then the instrument provides the value of total carbon and inorganic carbon for the sample. By, the, by these two uh, values, we can calculate the total organic car carbon by the subtraction and express the result in milligram per liter. The major interferences in the determination of total organic carbon includes for, for example for removal of carbonate and bicarbonate by acidification and purging with purifying gas result in the loss of volatile or organic substances. The volatile also can be during the sample blending particularly if the temperature is allowed to rise. Another important loss can occur if the large carbon containing particles fail to enter the needle used for the injection. So for that avoid the contaminated glassware, plastic containers and rubber tubing and analyze reagent blank following the same treatment procedure that we follow for the sample of the wastewater. So at the end of this module, we can conclude that the COD and the uh, TOC test are used to determine uh, the organic content or organic pollution load of the any domestic and industrial water. It is a uh, best way to determine or we can check the pollution measurement of any industrial waste and the domestic uh, uh, or sewage supply. But the COD test is preferable for those waste which are uh, present the biodegradable as well as some toxins and poisonous compound. So in by using these two tests we can identify the both organic uh, digestible compound as well as the inorganic or some uh, refractive uh, poisonous compound present in the water that can be easily determined by using these two tests. Thank you.